Welcome back. And now that we have added lighting, let's go ahead and add, start adding our navigation mesh. Okay, we know that haunted houses have ghosts roaming the halls. Here should be no different. To help our ghosts find their way around, Unity has a built-in system called the Nav Mesh, short for Navigation Mesh. In the second tutorial, you learn that a mesh is a collection of triangles that fit together to define a shape. The mesh enables John Lemon to be rendered to the screen. The Nav Mesh is an invisible shape over the ground that defines the area uh, within which selected game objects can move. So how do you decide which areas can and can't be moved over? Mark game objects as aesthetic. Okay, so... Okay, we'll do that, like that. Okay. Uh, when game object is identified as static, Unity's navigation systems assume that it will not move. Your game's environment is made up of many game objects with many mesh renderer components. A combination of all the meshes from the mesh renderer components whose game objects are marked as static form the basis for the nav mesh. To mark your environmental game as objects as static, in the hierarchy, select the level game object and the inspector says, enable the static checkbox. So we are on level, and in the inspector, in the hierarchy, now in the inspector, enable the static checkbox. Static. Dialog will appear asking whether you wish to enable the, the static flags for all child objects as well. Select yes, change children. Yes, change the children. Children. Now the game object and all of its child game objects are marked as static, but you need to set one exception. There's a ceiling plane game object in the level design which is being used to cast shadows. If you include this in the bake, the ghost might end up walking on the ceiling. As spooky as that sounds, it won't work for this game. Harky went to expand the level game object and his children. Okay. And um level corridors dressing ceiling plane. Levels corridors dressing ceiling plane okay in the inspector disable the static checkbox okay go to file save save your scene or as I like to do control s you may have noticed that when you're making these changes within the scene rather than the level prefab you're overriding the prefab settings without changing it this is very useful when you want to make small changes to a standard template. Okay, let's mark it. It's completed. Create the nav mesh. The process of creating nav mesh is called baking. This is done in, from the navigation menu. To bake your nav mesh, go to the menu bar, go to window, AI, and navigation to open the navigation window. The window should dock itself within the Spectre window. If it doesn't, drag it and dock it there. Okay, so window, uh, AI, navigation. And it does. Okay, there are four tabs at the top of the navigation window. Agents, areas, bake, and object. Select the bake tab. Ooh, bacon cake. A nav meshy cake. Select the bake tab. The bake settings control the details of how the nav mesh will be constructed. The first settings refer to the agents that will traverse the ghosts that will move around the nav mesh, the nav mesh agents. They specifically refer to the size of the agents and the terrain they can move across. The only setting you need to adjust for your game is the agent radius. The ghosts roaming the haunted house will be smaller than the default. Change the agent radius to 0 0.25. 0 0.25. Select the bake button at the bottom of the window. The bake process will take from a second to a few minutes depending on the power of your computer. When it finishes, the environment and the scene window will be covered in a light blue mesh. This is the area of the environment that the ghosts will be able to move around. So let's um actually let's control S. Let's um that's not what I want to do. That's what I want to do. And I just want to see it a little bit better. And let's back up just a tad. And let's hit bakey bake. Ooh, everything is walkable. 
Ah, ok. The nav mesh will only be visible when the navigation window is open and active. If you switch to the inspector tab, the mesh will disappear from the scene, but you don't worry when you can't see the nav mesh still there. Remember to save your scene and avoid losing any changes. Okay, so, control, S. So, if I go back to the inspector, it's gone. If I go back to navigation, it's there. Gone, there. Gone, there. Gone, there. And I got some sort of moth or something. A bunch of moths lately. Little little bugs mainly lately okay um, all right so what are we doing now summary in this tutorial you added an engaging environment for John Lemon to escape from and lit it appropriately you also baked an ab mesh so enemies will be able to move around the environment your game is starting to take shape and look good now it's time to get the camera moving and the post-processing effects that will make everything in the scene look even better. Mark step as completed. Meh. Meh.com. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue the next step because I'm not done. Um, I'm not done here. So now we'll have the camera. Let's see what happens when I hit play again. Okay, nothing happens. Which is fine. Okay, those are lights. Where are we? Okay, John Lemon's over here. No, 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 no. It's not a moon. It's not a moon. It's not a moon. Sorry, I was listening. Like I was listening to that song. I said, you know, it's not a moon. Okay, so explore the camera component. How does Cinema Machine work? Set up a virtual camera using the Cinema Machine. Change the Cinema Machine virtual camera component settings. Add post processing stuff. Create a post processing layer. Improve image quality with anti aliasing. Create a post processing volume. Add color grading effect. Add the bloom effect. Add the ambient inclusion effect. Add vignette effect. Add lens distortion effect. Summary. Okay. Summary, now that you've created a player character and environment, it's time to think about the camera for your game. In this tutorial, you will explore the camera component in Unity, set up a virtual camera using Cinemachine, add a range of different post-processing effects. Once you've completed this tutorial, your camera will be set up and make the game as visually interesting for players as possible. Exploring the camera component. In previous tutorial, you created a level for your game. The character can now walk around the scene, but this means that sometimes he wanders away from the camera. In this tutorial, you adjust the camera settings to make sure that doesn't happen. Scenes in Unity are made up of game objects, which in turn have a collection of components attached to them. The way that the scene is viewed by players is constructed the same way. Okay. Sorry, I'm a little sleepy. I was getting towards bedtime a little bit. To view the scene, scene a game object in the scene must have a camera component. When the new scene is, cre is created, a game object is added to the main camera. Um, here, let's expand this out a little bit. Um, this scene is created. A game object is added called main camera, which has a main camera component. Has a camera component. There's all the stuff in it. The camera points to the game object's Z axis, and B day is exactly like all their game objects. In the scene view, you can see Gizmo representing the camera's frustrum. Frustrum is a solid shape that looks like a pyramid with the top cut off parallel to the base. This is the shape of the region that can be seen and rendered by this perspective by a perspective camera. When you make a game, you have a few options to make sure that the camera follows your player, follows the player. One solution would be to write a script to this. However, Unity has a built-in solution to the problem: Cinema Machine. Whew, completed. How does Cinema Machine work? Please tell me. Cinema Machine is. Unity's answer to all the things related to cameras in games. A basic summary of the system is as follows. One or more virtual cameras are created in a scene. 
These virtual cameras are managed by a component called the Cinema Machine brand. The Cinema Machine brand is attached to the same game object as the camera component. By default, this will be the main camera game object. The Cinema Machine brand manages all the virtual cameras and decides which virtual camera or combination of virtual cameras the actual camera should follow. In your game, the camera will only ever be following John Lemon, so you only need one virtual camera. But make sure you make sure this virtual camera follows John Lemon, and the main camera game object will stick to that. Alrighty, sounds good. Um, uh, before actually setting up anything, I'm going to go ahead and cut this video a little bit short, um, and I will see you in the next video.